Welcome back once again, and thanks for coming back again to enjoy and learn and think and work on a good grade. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Uh, so precipitation and the KSP. Um, we kind of alluded to this a little bit already um, in saying that the formation constant is the reverse of the KSP constant. Let's look at it again in a different way. But we actually, what we want to do is come up with this thing called Q again. Way back in chapter G whiz, 13, 14 was it? We came up with this idea that a reaction quotient could be written to describe the relative amounts of ions and species in an equilibrium. And then using that to compare Q to K and say, well, if Q is this, then this will happen. If Q is that, then that will happen. So let's say, uh, generally speaking, once again, this uh, insoluble salt, or fairly insoluble salt, um, metal, non-metal, um, this is my expression, but previously I labeled this uh, KSP. But, so why am I labeling it Q now? And the answer is, if you remember things about why we use Q in the first place, it's for mixtures that are questionably at equilibrium or may not indeed be at equilibrium. So I'm just wondering, if I mix some random ions of M plus and X minus uh, up in the mixture, will I see precipitation or will there be so, will there be so few of them, so little of them, that they will allow the amounts to stay dissolved in the water? Here's a very rare case where Q would actually equal or approximately equal KSP. If that was true, then I suppose I would still be at an, I would, would be at an equilibrium and I would not get too much of this, but perhaps a little bit. More commonly, you'll find Q to be much larger or much smaller than, than my KSP. So here's the deal. If Q comes out bigger than KSP, I will see precipitation because my uh, ions and my species in, in on the right-hand side you know what I'm saying? Like over here, like over here. If Q is too big, then this is too big, and this is too big, and so these will reduce to make more of that, and um, yeah, force some of the ions out of the equilibrium because out of the solution because we can't hold so much. On the other hand, if Q is small and they have relatively small amounts of the ions present, or could be neutral species then that might allow um, might allow no precipitation or might allow them to stay dissolved in the water. Here's a silly cartoon that tries to reflect that. A solution initially holds small amount of silver and even smaller amount of cyanide ion. Will a precipitate form if my KSP for silver cyanide is 2.2108 to 12? Cartoon. One liter of water in a beaker. 0.00001 molar silver, 0.00002 molar cyanide. Those are such small amounts, I can't imagine I would see anything precipitating. Oh yeah, in the olden school, PPT is the abbreviation for precipitate. But on the other hand, this is a small number, which says that not much silver cyanide can stay dissolved in the water in the first place. So let me do a little calculation to find out. So I write uh, silver ion, cyanide ion, just based on, oh, I didn't write the equation. Shame on me, but I can kind of think of it. Think about what it would be. I'd have silver cyanide solid over here, equilibrium arrows, silver plus ion and cyanide CN minus ion. And so there's one of these and one of these, so those are both of the first power. All right, so it looks like a small number, but, oh, not but, and, <laughs> and since 10 to the negative 10 is larger than, I'm sorry, 10 to the negative 11 is larger than 10 to the negative 12, this one's about uh, 10 times larger than this one. I will see a little bit of precipitation. Not a whole lot, but I need to get these numbers down so that when I take the product, they actually equal this smaller number. This is too big. Another example. Will I see a precipitation if I mix 75 milliliters of 0.02 molar barium, hydro barium chloride Barium chloride dissolves pretty well in the water. Same for potassium sulfate. Most sulfates do dissolve in the water, but you know what? Barium sulfate doesn't dissolve in the water. So if I write a molecular equation, just thinking about the stoichiometry, 
indeed one of these will react with one of these to give one of these, but I don't really care about what's over here right now. I'm more, more worried about what's over here. Um, yeah, so what's the stoichiometry again? As soon as I see of, I think times 75 milliliters times 0.02 molar, 125 milliliters times 0.04 molar. So this goes way back to the last term when we talked about aqueous stoichiometry. Mill milliliters, I'm sorry, volume times molarity gives moles. And volume times molarity gives moles. The total volume here is um, 75 plus 125, or 200 milliliters. So, uh, let me think here. Oh yeah, so those are my molar concentrations of barium chloride and potassium sulfate. Does that also translate over into, yeah, I think it should, right. Since one barium chloride gives one barium ion and one potassium sulfate gives one sulfate ion, this is my situation. And I'm curious, will I see precipitation into barium sulfate? Or are these numbers so small that I can allow, this mixture will allow them to stay dissolved in the water? So I go here, I go here, I look up this number from the back of the book, or I have to be told, and most cases, and unless I'm told what these are, but in this type of question, I'm curious to compare these two concentrations and how they combine to compare to that KSP. And lo and behold, 0 0.0075, 0 0.025, multiply, give me a larger number than my KSP. So again, since this is larger than this, this is too big, this is too big, and they'll go back this way to create more precipitation, or some precipitation, until these get low enough so that they're equal to that. Interesting, yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, yeah, one more thing then. Um, by the time we have the precipitation, I had 5 millimoles of this and 15 millimoles of this. The 5 millimoles of this will take 5 millimoles of this and make 5 millimoles of this, but who cares as long as I have enough uh, or some of that solid in there to keep the equilibrium established. So you'll notice this is not an ice table, but it's initial change final table. And in as this goes one way, because that constant is so small, I suppose this would be a constant of 10 and that would be a billion so I really want to form this barium sulfate stuff. But if I take that then and say 10 millimoles of barium ion, and the solid really doesn't matter much, but this is actually left over from that, from what did not or would not precipitate out, then I could go work the problem as I've always done, saying in the beginning I don't really care about this, but I know I have 0.05 molar of this. And none of this, because it all reacted with this to give this, but then i got to consider the backwards reaction as well to say, do I have absolutely none of this? And the answer is no, not absolutely none of it. Uh, the 0.05, I'm again going to assume is much bigger than the x, so I write out my KSP expression. KSP must be satisfied in the, at the equilibrium condition. So I have 0.05 molar of this, oh yeah, or plus x, but I'm assuming x is so small. Look, see here, it comes out pretty small. It's uh, one, two, three, a thousand times smaller than this. So anyways, looks like I still have sulfate ion in the water, but a much smaller amount. All right, anything else I need to say about that? I wish I could hear what your questions are, but look how I fit the numbers in there. I don't think I made any boo-boos. Uh, the barium ion concentration stays about the same as it was in the beginning, or as it was after 5 millimoles precipitated with the sulfate. Cool. Second example, solutions made by mixing 50 milliliters point molar lead nitrate with 50 milliliters point or 1 molar KCl, the KSP for lead chloride. Find the resulting lead ion and chloride ion concentrations. I don't know. Let me think out loud for a second. 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar lead, 50 milliliters of 1 molar KCl. Will I see a precipitation form? The total volume is 50 plus 50 is 100 milliliters. Here's my molar concentrations. And indeed, the KSP is always calculated based on molar, molar concentrations. So move those down here, fit them into a Q, and I say lead. Oh, tricky, tricky. Now this 0.5 molar of chloride came from an outside source. It's not coming from the dissolution here. So in a sense, this amount is fixed by the KCL. Was it KCL? KCL, yeah, KCL. 
so that's fixed and this is the new lead, new lead concentration based on the mixture of those two fluids solutions and I see Q comes out to this which is indeed again much larger than this so the answer is yeah I will see some of this lead chloride come out of the water and form a solid precipitation but the story continues if that really happens and it does I can show you the demonstration five millimoles of this five millimoles of this will go all the way with five millimoles of this to make five millimoles of this but I don't really care about that like I always say as long as I have some of it in there the pure solids and pure liquids aren't written in the constant expression this basically basically goes to zero for the time being and I'm reducing this from 50 to 45 millimoles but does that mean that I absolutely positively have no lead is that only a one-way arrow and as you know the answer is no it's not it's a KSP it's a solubility product equilibrium where I have some of this and a teeny bit of this well some of this and quite a bit of this on the relative scale and how much of this am I going to get well the answer is not much but uh, let's see oh yeah so I had 45 millimoles here of the chloride ion and again that's fairly well fixed by the by the potassium chloride being put into the water and so I write some of this increase this amount by a little bit this is going to increase a little bit also so this is really 0.45 plus x oh fiddlesticks and that should be a plus my bad I'll fix that as well before I post the PDF so that's a plus my bad and anyways doesn't matter if x is small I can ignore it uh, bring the 0.45 over to the uh, denominator of this side and mm, yeah oh yeah don't forget to square the 0.45 molar that was coming from the KCL squared that so my final answer I believe on this one is my chloride ion I'm sorry my lead ion concentration at 0 0.000079 molar these are all very involved questions wouldn't you say let me try one more if I have time here's some aluminum hydroxide doesn't dissolve very well in water look at that small KSP my point here is this is pH dependent if I have a whole bunch of OH minus in the water already that's not going to allow much aluminum hydroxide to dissolve um, or another way to say it is if I had aluminum ion in the water when at what pH would my precipitation first start to begin um, so I could call the OH minus concentration the X I don't know that number but if I had 0.2 molar aluminum water um, then what would that result in my hydroxide ion concentration being let's see did I do the math correctly bring the point two three times three times three is 27 cubed x cubed I think that's all right so what does that mean that means my hydroxide ion concentration is super small and that also means one another interpretation is that unless I have almost a slightly acidic solution I'm gonna get very 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 little aluminum hydroxide ever dissolving in the water but if it is acidic then it would dissolve really well um, let's see I could do a negative log of that number and find a pOH and a pH and my interpretation of this is that my aluminum hydroxide dissolves very 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 minusculely to a very small amount unless my pH is pretty low my pH is low and I have very few OH minuses in the water then that will probably allow or is that equation again if I have very little of this very little of this in the water then that La Chatelet would say that this will come apart more dissolve more to make more of this and more of this so I get more dissolving anyways something to think about thanks guys I'll fix that typo and see you in class thanks again for watching seriously